is the story of Hoover Dam, one of America's seven modern civil engineering wonders. path to it. For many centuries, this was a lonely canyon, unseen and untouched by man, scorched by a desert sun, scolded by an angry river slashing its way to the mother sea. Now it lies peaceful and silent, except for the gentle hum of a hydroelectric power plant, the bubbling up of water as it leaves mighty turbines, the cheerful sounds of America and the world on the move to see this pioneer multipurpose reclamation project, man built in Black Canyon. Millions come to this once desolate spot to see this engineering wonder, to hear the story of Hoover Dam. Ladies and gentlemen, we're now standing on the powerhouse ramp 560 feet below the top of the dam. This is Black Canyon where Nevada and Arizona meet where the Colorado River once flowed uncontrolled. Here is where man conquered this mighty river, placing a concrete yoke about its neck to harness its tremendous water and power resources. The water that flows through the canyon. Through the ages, the river has gathered to its bed the snow-fed rivulets of the Rockies, flowing southwestward in its wild 1,400-mile descent to the Pacific Ocean, gouging great canyons, piling up great deltas of silt in the valleys. Early settlers were at the mercy of this untamed giant. Melted snow from the mountains each spring swelled the Colorado River into a raging torrent, flooding fertile valleys along its banks, destroying farmlands, homes, and cities. In 1905, the Colorado cut through its banks below the Mexican border and for two years poured unchecked into the Salton Sink, forming an inland sea. After each spring's flood, when the river had spent its fury, it dried to a trickle. Crops withered and died. Man and his livestock thirsted. All living things suffered. Settlers along the river were discouraged and aroused. Some gave up and went elsewhere. Others stayed to fight. The river had to be regulated, controlled in a year-round flow if they were to succeed. No more floods, no more droughts. Arthur Powell Davis, first reclamation director and chief engineer, understood their problem. For years, he had traveled up and down the river, surveying, studying. Build a high dam and a deep canyon upstream to control the river, he reasoned. In 1918, Davis reported his findings and proposals to Congress. Congress responded in 1928, passed the Boulder Canyon Project Act, authorizing construction of Hoover Dam to control and regulate the Colorado River and the All-American Canal System to deliver water to farmlands on the lower river. In 1930, President Herbert Hoover, for whom the dam is named, signed the appropriation bill to begin construction. Under a contract awarded in March 1931 to six companies incorporated, a combine of six major construction firms, men and machines went to work to build this dam of unprecedented size, this modern civil engineering wonder. Reclamation engineers rushed to completion, specifications, and design drawings. Crews at the dam site completed their surveys and investigations. The thunder of man's determination to conquer the Colorado reverberated between the sheer cliffs of Black Canyon as construction got underway. The first major task was to divert the river around the dam site. To do this, four tunnels, two on each side, were drilled through the canyon walls. Each 56 feet in diameter, they averaged 4,000 feet in length. 
drill holes were packed with dynamite and blasted. After each explosion, shovels and trucks entered the tunnels, mucked out the shattered rock, and dumped it in nearby gulches. Workmen excavated over one and a half million cubic yards of blasted rock material from the four tunnels in 13 months. The tunnels then were lined with concrete three feet thick. Explosions rocked the canyon almost daily for two years before actual placing of concrete in the dam began. Acrobatic workmen called high scalers prepared the canyon walls for each blast. Suspended on ropes, they drilled holes in the rock and loaded them with dynamite. After each explosion, these daredevils swarmed over the cliffs, prying loose rock and clearing the walls of debris. In November 1932, the Colorado River was diverted. Under control for the first time in its history, the river flowed around and past the site. Men and trucks dumped an earthen rock embankment across the canyon below the tunnel openings, forcing the river from its age-old bed through the huge diversion tubes. A second earthen rock dam was thrown across the river above the tunnel outlets downstream, keeping water from backing into the foundation area. Isolated and protected from the river by the two coffer dams, the site was pumped dry. Men and machines dug 135 feet below the old river level to reach bedrock for the dam's foundation, excavating over two million cubic yards of rock, earth, and sand. As cleanup of the dam site exposed the ancient bed of the Colorado River, geologists read the history of what happened ages ago. Workmen cleaned and prepared bedrock surfaces to receive the first concrete assuring utmost stability for Hoover Dam's foundation. Twelve miles upstream, drag lines excavated sand and gravel for the dam's concrete from an old stream bed deposit on the Arizona side. A train hauled this raw material to an aggregate plant across the river, a few miles above the dam site. Here, the sand and gravel passed through various processes of screening, grading, and washing until it emerged as unexcelled aggregate. Then it was stockpiled according to sizes to await its trip to the dam site. This processed aggregate moved as called for in a steady flow over the railroad to two mixing plants, one in the canyon bottom and the other on the Nevada rim. There, sand and gravel were blended with cement into a uniform mix, meeting rigid specifications for the four and one half million cubic yards of concrete to be placed in the dam structures. From the mixing plants, concrete was dispatched to all points of construction. Nine anchored aerial cableways spanning the canyon from rim to rim lowered the concrete into the forms and handled other supplies and equipment as well. As the first bucket of concrete settled into its foundation on June 6, 1933, Hoover Dam began its rise from the depths of Black Canyon. As cableways dumped load after load of concrete into the forms, the dam soon reached its full 660-foot thickness at its base, poured in five-foot layers of concrete. The structure's keyed or interlocking columns climbed skyward as crews set new records daily. Bucketful after bucketful ran the continuous cycle, mixing plant to canyon rim, out into midair over the gorge, 